with this one, it felt as if the bench was that energy booster when it was needed. How would you describe what they're able to do during that stretch? It's why I love team basketball. It's uh, doing your part, not knowing when you're going to be called on. We've been talking about that, trying to normalize that with our group. And uh, next thing you know, you called upon, our starters got off to a great start, and then we get 66 points from the bench. So uh, pretty impressive. Uh, guys ready to play and do their part. What is it, though, because we've seen this happen before when you have a lot of guys out. What have you seen that's just been the secret to maintaining that resiliency and that growth and just seeing them all come together? Yeah, it's really just trying to stay in the now and uh, having that one common goal of coming to the, to the game. Uh, we had appropriate fear tonight versus this team and uh, stay with our goal of winning the basketball game. And so, uh, like I said, the starters got us off to a great start, so I thought our momentum was good, uh, even going into halftime. Uh, and, and then the bench... Um, it's just a great testament, and, and again, it really is who we want to be, the fiber of our team. We don't care who's playing, who we're playing against. We're just trying to win a basketball game every single time. Coach, two quick ones for you. Yeah. Um, they, you guys had the 19-point lead, and then they came back and took a lead of their own. Just what happened there, and then how were you guys able to rally back and take control of the game? Yeah, a big part of that was, uh, you know, we didn't make shots at that stretch. Uh, and so that combination, we start fouling a little bit, the game slowed down, they got to the free throw line. So bad combination for us, mixed in with a few offensive rebounds on their end. So, um, But kept our poise, uh, continued to communicate. Again, another recipe of 41 threes tonight we shot. So uh, that puts a lot of pressure on guys to, to uh, get stops against us. And, and second, Dayron just coming off the bench and felt like he really left his imprint on, on this game what did you see from him that allowed him to play the way he did it's a it's a great uh, lesson for young guys in this league is uh, you use your opportunity when it you know uh, arrives and uh, he's been playing in Long Island taking advantage of minutes there uh, and then when he gets a chance so he gets a chance he might play has a sore back then falls on his back and then he plays some minutes and then to have the resolve now like you don't know if you're going to get another chance again, another shot again. So uh, I give him credit for doing what he needed to do in between, you know, game days to be ready to play today. And um, uh, some really good minutes from him. Jack, good lesson got, for him. I'm me cut you off, Shaq. I got two for you. Tonight marked your 10th game without Kevin. You know, going in, it looked like the defense had kind of stayed pretty close. And obviously the offense dropped off a bit, which was expected. Just now that you have this sample size, I guess, what do you make of how you guys have handled life without him for these past 10 games? Well, I think we've been able to uh, somewhat form uh, a recipe for how we want to play. Uh, I think you see the three ball. So that's a uh, part of who we are. And so being able to shoot 43s again, that uh, seems like a pretty good clip for us. Uh, with Kevin, our pace, we're probably 14th in the league. Right now, we're probably eighth or seventh without him. So being able to play uh, faster so that we can get shots up earlier in the shot clock. And then it's a collective unit on the opposite end of the floor. It won't look pretty all the time. We've used zone before. We've uh, uh, played small before. We've played big before. So on that end of the floor, we're figured out. We're hovering around top 10 in the league. If we can stay in there, in that realm, we'll be okay. But the fouling and the free throws uh, and the rebounding piece, we need to take care of. I was saying, going off that, I mean, you know, a couple games ago, he kind of played maybe eight or nine guys. Tonight, you kind of expanded the rotation just... How much of that varies based on matchup and, and flow and whatnot? Because it, it seems like that's still the uh, fluctuating variable. I came up with that off the top of my head as, as, with all this. Yeah, I love variables. Makes sense, yeah. <laughs> I love it. I, I really do want to normalize that with this group. And uh, the reason is, is we're going to get into a playoff series, and the ninth guy really might be the fourth guy in the series. And so I want them to get comfortable with that. That it's not, uh, I've been in this, I checked into the game at this time, every single time throughout the course of the year. I played these amount of minutes. No. Play hard in your minutes, and then when you're called upon, be ready. Now, that is not the typical NBA. And so tonight, yeah, we went with 11 in the first half to keep everyone ready. And a part of that is uh, responding to the work that they do outside of it. So our stay ready group, Reward and Patty, Ed, Keith, uh, those guys, then giving you to some extra some run. So um, really, at the end of the day, hopefully that becomes the fiber and the makeup of our team, where Kevin and Kai, you know, their minutes they're going to get, the rest of the guys being ready to play. And when we're going off, I mean, you've talked about the rebounding. You know, Dayron, every time he comes in, he always picks up a few. Just is there anything more he can do to kind of get regular time given the 
bonus he gives you guys there? Or is it, as you kind of said, just still a revolving door with all that? No, the consistency is going to, you know, for young guys, that's going to be the challenge for him. So we want him to play those minutes as hard as he possibly can, which he has. Uh, Nick, Nick is going to get the minutes. Nick is playing too well for him. It's hard to keep him off the floor. And so, uh, but if Dayron can be a, a, uh, a reliable person to give Nick some minutes, uh, that's great for this ball club. Even last game, we played both of them together. So, uh, you know me, I'll experiment with that thing, Alex, and, and uh, see what works. Speaking of Nick, I think there was a play maybe in the first quarter where he had the uh, give and go with Edmund and got to the rack. Just we talk about scoring and the strides he's taking, blocking, rebounding, strides he's taking. But in terms of assisting and playmaking, what have you seen from him in that department? Well, he's been able to do that. You know, if you look back to his college years, he was, uh, you know, a DHO, dribble up the floor, rebound kind of guy. So he has the knack of doing it. Uh, with the best part about what Nick is doing is nothing when you watch him seems forced. You know, whether it is he's faking a DHO, whether he's getting a rebound when he's setting the screen, slipping to the rim, uh, going one-on-one -on -one when a guy overplays one of our smalls, nothing is forced. Uh, so, like, the other night he had, you know, he ended up no shots, I think, at halftime and then had six shots in the second half. So he's learning how to let the game come to him. He's going to have impact on both ends without forcing it. Patty's been in and out of the rotation, obviously, you know, saw what he did on offense yeah. tonight, but he had that sequence in the third where he got, I think, Lonnie Walker and ISO, picked his pocket, and then he got a steal on the, on the following possession. Yeah. Do you think that, you know, him as a guy who's not known as a defender doing that says something for the rest of the team? It's it's unbelievable. You take what this dude has gone, done over his career, whether he has medals in his back pocket for uh, what he's done for his country. Uh, he is the oldest dude on our team, and he works every single day and prepares himself like he is going to play. So uh, you give him a lot of love for that. And imagine the position that he's been in. Like, he's had DMP CDs this year because of this dude right here. And uh, I've challenged him to uh, still be ready to play when he's called upon. He's gone multiple games without playing and still works on this game because there's going to be a playoff game where Patty Mills is going to have an impact in the game and he's mentally and physically ready to do that just like tonight just happened to be a regular season game as you guys now get ready for uh, Boston on Wednesday I know you said that you're hopeful that Ben and TJ will be ready to good to go but will, will everybody travel including Katie uh, I don't think Katie is traveling that was the last word I got from uh, from the group and uh, besides that, hopefully everyone else is ready to go.